Hello, everybody, and welcome to the update on our Q2 figures of the Nemeche Group. A short introduction from my side. My name is Stephanie Zimmermann, and I'm VP Investor Relations at the Nemeche Group. We already published our Q2 figures at the end of July, and now, after the vacation period, I would like to briefly present you the key strategic highlights and figures here again. So let's get started. I think it's safe to say that we really had a stellar second quarter with all of our major KPIs reaching new record highs. In concrete, revenues grew to almost 166 million euros in the second quarter. That is corresponding to an underlying FX adjusted growth of 21.5%. This was the strongest organic quarterly growth since many years. Main growth drivers were once again our subscription and SaaS revenues with an increase of more than 50% on a currency adjusted basis. With this, we continued to increase our recurring revenues to a new high of almost 100 million euros in the quarter. The overproportional growth of our EBITDA to 56 million euros led to a very high EBITDA margin of 34%. This is a function of the high growth a high efficiency in the group, as well as the healthy operating leverage. Looking at the bottom line, our earnings per share reached an impressive 0.29 euro per share. This success once again highlights the operational strength of our business, which is based on our strong market position together with our attractive and innovative software solutions, our successful strategic initiatives, and last but not least, the high degree of commitment and motivation of our meanwhile more than 3,000 employees worldwide. Let's move to the next page. Page three gives you a summary of our key business highlights after the first six months of the year. Similar to the second quarter, the first half figures also testify our strong operational performance. Despite a substantial headwind from the US dollar, we were still able to achieve reported revenues of 324 million euros. On a currency adjusted basis, our top line increased by more than 16%. We already talked about the growth drivers leading to an impressive EBITDA growth and a very, very high EBITDA margin. Apart from our financial performance, I also would like to highlight our strategic progress which you can see on the right-hand side of this chart. First of all, the successful completion of the first fully-fledged integration of Redshine and Redshift into Maxon in our media segment. Second, we also successfully executed on our announced strategy to invest into startups with investments in two young companies. In addition to the fast-growing German company Sablono, this is a digital solution provider for increasing efficiency in the construction process. We also invested in the US startup Reconstruct. This is an expert in the quality control of construction site with artificial intelligence based solutions. Both firms have a great future ahead and by partnering with Nemechek, definitely we will be part of their success. Third, we also strengthened Alplan's position as the leading structural engineering software provider by combining it with our experts for precast parts on the one hand, as well as by increasing the competence of Alplan in the field of steel construction by incorporating our US brand SDS2. So you see that we are really on the way to harmonize our portfolio. And last, the ongoing success of our subscription and SaaS offering underpin the success of our segment tailored approach. Let's come to the next page, coming to page four. As you all know, one of our main objectives is the topic of recurring revenues and in particular, the development of our subscription and SaaS business. As mentioned previously, we are very pleased with the development in this area, showing an FX such as the purely organic growth of more than 50% in the first six months. Due to the strong pickup in our license revenues, our share of recurring revenues remains stable year over year. When we're taking a closer look at the composition of the recurring part of our revenues, it really becomes clear that our segment tailored subscription strategy is very successful. 
In the middle of the slide, you can see the results from our acceleration of this program. While we started with a share of just 4% of total revenues in 2018, we were able to gradually increase our subscription SaaS share to a remarkable 18% as of today. Let's move to the next page. Now, um, to conclude on our results, let's look at our four reporting segments Starting on the left side, our design segment achieved an outstanding performance in the second quarter with an FX adjusted growth of more than 19% and an EBITDA margin of nearly 33%, mainly also driven by an acceleration of our licensed business. A similar picture with a growth of around 20% and an EBITDA margin of even 45% can be seen when we look at our build segment. The largest contribution was again coming from our biggest brand, Bluebin, which was able to win the highest number of new users in the company's history. Based on this really excellent business momentum, we decided that Bluebin will choose a more conservative approach for the planned transition of its business to a subscription model. The smoother approach will allow Bluebin to continue its currently strong growth path by winning new users and market share, and therefore start the transition from an even higher user base in 2022. Coming to our third segment, the managed segment, we also saw a pickup in growth to 15.5% after 9.2 in Q1. And last but not least, coming to our media segment, and it really needs to be highlighted that the reported growth of 34% is purely organic. And we were also able to expand the margins after the successful integration mentioned before. So all in all, all our segments performed extremely well. Let's turn to page six and let me come to the outlook. First, a quick look at the industry. I think it's fair to say that in all of our end markets, we are positive regarding the current market environment, our positioning as well as the future outlook. From left to right, the residential sector, which was already nicely resilient during the crisis, is still benefiting from a very high demand for housing space in light of low interest rates. The same is true for the infrastructure market and most part of the non-residential market. Very healthy situation at the moment, which is also unlikely to change anytime soon, given the various government investments and infrastructure projects, which will support the market also in the coming years. The only sector where we still see some degree of uncertainty is some smaller pockets of growth is the commercial sector. Nevertheless, we consider this is an area for future growth and Nemechek remains well positioned to participate in this sole core business around building life cycle management. And now um, to my last slide and to our updated 2021 outlook. As a result of our very strong operational growth in the first half of the year, the continued confident outlook for the second half of the year, as well as our strategic decision for a more conservative blueprint transition, given the great business momentum, we have upgraded our outlook for 2021. This means that from today's perspective and based on the current portfolio, we increased our revenue outlook for 2021, now expecting a currency adjusted growth of 12 up to 14%. Formerly, we expected a high growth in the high single digit range. In addition, we also increased our EBITDA margin guidance to a range of 30 to 32%. Our previous guidance was the EBITDA margin was 27 to 29%. So all in all, a pretty strong increase in our guidance. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Hi there, since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. And that's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and added value content for you. If you're a company and want to find out how we at Seat 11A can make a company video with and about you, please email us at content at seat11a.com.